I hope you had a great jab sessions already this morning. I did. So let's talk about automailing. And that's something that is uh, really a big issue for a lot of people that want to do inbound marketing and outbound marketing and things. So let's talk about that. And I really would like to have an open discussion on this topic and more be a moderator than being a speaker. Is that okay with you? If you have questions, yes, throw them at me. Uh, yes, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm an evangelist for MuGure, uh, the newsletter component that I'm going to present today. And uh, I'm also the CEO of a web agency in Stockholm that's called PixPro. And we've been working with Mambo and Joomla since 2004. Um, and uh, I'm also the president of the User Association in Sweden. And I've been there for like four years. So that's me and I'm pretty much in love with Joomla since the first day. So first, when we talk about newsletter and email marketing. We actually have to think about that is not just sending out emails, it's more having a strategy on how you communicate. This is just one vehicle in that mix. And a lot of people don't think about that. So that is something that I want to press on. And you have to figure out how and why and who and what and when and then how. So why are you sending out emails at all? Should you? And if you are sending out emails, to who? Who is your target market for emails? And then you have to think about what are you going to talk about in your emails that is actually interesting for that audience. Otherwise, there's just going to be something that comes in through their inbox and it's going on below the flow or they fold and uh, you're not going to get opened and not getting that visuality that you wanted. So why, who, what, and when? When are your target audience mostly accepting newsletter from you? When is the highest opening rate? And how should you think about that? And then how are you going to send it out? Are you going to send it out via your Outlook or are you going to send it out via like a component Joomla or are you going to use your CRM system? How? That's also very important. Uh, so it's um, a lot of people don't think about then why. Why should you send out something? Do you know why you send out emails? No, well, yeah, so it's a lead generating. So that could be one. Do you have an or Yeah, actually. So if uh, you can have something that actually tra track them and want them to drill into that, okay? So that's also a thing. Um, so then this, who are you going to reach? Do you have different target audience? Then you should actually have different communication to them. Not everything fits for everyone. So that's really important to think about how can you actually get a subscriber to open up the newsletter. If it's not for me, if the subject line is not for me, then I won't open it because I don't have the time of like looking at all the emails that hundreds of, hundreds of emails every day I think that most of us get. So it has to actually get to the point that I'm interested in. So think more outside in than inside out. And then think about when. Some people have a lot of discussion, okay, Thursday afternoons. That's the best way of sending emails. Because in the beginning of the week, you plan for the week. And then you perform during the week. And then Thursday afternoon, you get bored. You have something to get to distract and, and then you go into your inbox and you start looking at whatever you got. If that is one thing for you, 
that's great. But it could be exactly that Saturday mornings. That would be the best for you. It depends all on your target group. And the best way of looking at that is statistics. And see and try. If I send it out this week, what is it that happens? If I send it out in the afternoon or in the morning? If I send it out during the weekend or in a weekday? So more or less, it's trial and error. And then making sure that you use that information that you get from your statistics. And then you have to think about how you're going to send it out. And I think that you have to be smart about your time. And you have so much more information in Joomla than you actually think about. Because usually you have a lot of components and you have a lot of users in your system already. Why don't we use that information? And why don't we use information from articles and from other components as well in our newsletters to work smart? Because time is money. We don't have time to redo a newsletter every single week. So if we just start on having the target market, who are we going to aim for? Then you have to start building your list. I think in most countries there is illegal they put people on the list if they haven't subscribed to it. And they have to have an opt-out link so they don't receive any mails from you anymore. So I think that's more worldwide now. So you can't just put things on there. It's like if you find a same list and say, OK, oh, they sent it to everybody in the two mail and I got the whole list. I can copy that and send things to them. That's not OK. So don't. But you have to then track people to voluntarily give out this information. And how can you do that is the big question for you to think about when you think about your strategy. How can I build my list? It could be places like this. I can ask you, do you want to know more about this? Do you want to sign up for a newsletter? I'm going to send a newsletter every month and talk about new features in your newsletter. And if you would like to, you can sign up. But that's voluntarily. And you can be a subscriber as long as you want to, and then you can opt out. That's one way. Another way could be in your Facebook profile or in your Facebook page for your company. You can have a sign-up form. Or you can have a, if you have a shopping cart, and they go out and fill in orders. And in the end, you can have an information about, do you want to have more information about the products and product news? Please feel free to check in this box. So in every single time you have a connection with your visitor from the website or you meet people offline, please feel free to talk about that you offer a newsletter. And you have to state the benefit and the content and the frequency of your newsletter. Because if I feel like I'm going to have a newsletter every morning, I don't want to have that. I may, might want to have something every month or maybe every quarter. But if I don't know how frequent you are, then I can't sign up. That's a barrier. So take that away and just state, this is the benefits, this is the content, and this is the frequency. And then you have to think about on your, new, on your web page where your sign-up form is. Because it has to be above the fold and it has to stick out. Otherwise, people are not going to sign up. And then you have to tell them that it's, if you have a few, like, few lines, of, uh, of fields to sign into, that's going to be a lower barrier as well to sign up for it. If you ask for a lot of information that when are you going to buy a new, a new website, uh, what is your budget, how many employees you are, it's not that interesting to know the first time you have a new lead if you're going to get attract more people to your newsletter. You can ask that kind of questions later on. But for the first time, just ask for maybe their first name and their email address and what kind of list they want to be on then you're going to have more sign-ups. At the same time, if, if you can make the things that they feel that they're going to miss out if they don't sign up. So if you can have a sentence or something that makes them like, oh, you have to have this, otherwise I'm going to just not get that value information. Because that's something you give out. That should be a value for that client or that customer or that visitor to get that information from you. You spend your time writing all this stuff and sending it out to them. And there has to be a value for them. It's not promotion only. So in all touch points, uh, even if you have a, uh, an event registration, or if you have white papers, or if you have uh, free webinars, ask them to sign up for your newsletter because you're going to offer them something really good for their benefit, for their business. 
And think about if they sign up themselves to newsletter, instead of you saying that when we meet people like here, you have a new, like you get a, like a business card and you say, okay, hi, we met a jab. I'd like you to sign up to your newsletter because I think that's actually going to give you a lot of benefits. That person is not going to open up the newsletter as much as people that sign up for free on voluntarily on their own. So that is something you can look at it when you look at statistics. And I think the strength of marketing email in Joomla is just that we, not just the luxury that you have one login. It's not just that. It's more or less that you can figure out how to do smart newsletters. And that's what we're going to talk about more. So the design, I'm not going to talk about the design a lot because I'm not a designer. But I'm just going to point out some points that I figure out it's actually something that is really valuable. And it's that 7% of your readers will not have images shown by default. So the first time they look at your newsletter, there is not going to be any images. It's just going to be alternate text for your image if you have one. And there still has to be something that makes them show their images. And it has to be something that they can actually be actionable on. So you can't have that in an image, like press this button to sign up, because they're not going to sign up then. So that's something that I like to think about. And also provide the unsubscribe link, really visible. And also have a link to your website version of your newsletter, because it could be that they are not on a device that's appropriate for showing newsletters at all. And also, if you have text that you write yourself, have someone else proofread it. It could be that you have the best offer in the world and you have a great content, but if it's misspelled a lot, that's not good enough. It's not, you're not showing respect for your clients that are reading the, reading the newsletter. And offer a text-only version, because that's also important. So that's my just things about the design, and that's more functions for it. So why am I talking about smart newsletters? It's because I'm, I was tired when I was doing newsletters to create new newsletters for my target audience, for my five groups of target audience every single week. I want to do something better. And we have clients for in a web agency that do the same. They have maybe client lists from, um, from Gothenburg, from Stockholm, from Malmö. And they want to reach them and say, okay, we have these kind of events every week. And we want to show them the event list. We want to show them some um, graphical information about sponsors for these events. They want to have a sign-up form and everything. But they don't want to rebuild that every single time. And that's what they did when we met them. So we then looked at Joomla and thought that could be something that is really, yes, grab and get. Because it's in there. We have the event list there already in the component. So why couldn't we just say the upcoming event module to show in the newsletter? And you have several components that do that today. So that was pretty easy. But if you, don't have, if you haven't used it already, you don't know the power of it. Because it saves you hours and hours every single week when you do this. So that's a great way of getting in contact a lot without a big effort. And you know the correct information is there because you know the links works already. So you don't have to spend a lot of time on testing that. Uh, so it could be latest news. It could be like event forms. It could be uh, articles information. It could be other things. So, um, so this is just one of our newsletters. You can have like a... Oh, sorry like a top image or something, like your logo on your newsletter. And this actually is just the latest article in one category that aims for that target audience. And this is just modules that picks up information from different categories in Joomla. And that means that when we send out this, we don't have to do much. We just have to have an article in Joomla that we already published on the net anyway. So this information goes out. And we know it works. So that's, that's something to think about how to make smart newsletters. So yep. uh, on your website, uh, you keep in mind that when posting new articles, you are also writing for newsletters. Yes. 
Yeah, that's only the intertext. And then you have a read more line or you have a, uh, um, a linkable title or something. Yeah. So that's an article in Joomla that I want to save for just that particular audience. Yeah. And I can, in the newsletter, uh, that should be free to put in everything. Like the standard modules from Joomla and other extensions that could work as well. Not free. It could be. Uh, and uh, if you have an audience that are not frequent guests at your website and not, uh, and not working with RSS, that is a great way. We had a newspaper that we made a Joomla site for, and every single day at 4 o'clock, the, uh, the marketing component for Joomla was taking away and taking in all the articles from the latest news from their news flow for the day and sent that out at four o'clock to all the 5,000 subscribers. And that meant that they got visitors back to the website because they didn't have to go in there if they didn't have the time, but they didn't lose any information about their particular industry that was their goal to get an overview of. So they could just go in there and say, okay, read more about just this kind of article. And when that newsletter was not present in their mailbox, they were like, what is this? So they really depended on it. And that actually spikes their the visitors. So that's a good way of doing it it's in a good way. So that was more smart newsletters. And think about auto mailings. What is the difference? Uh, the difference for me when I think about it is how you can have auto responders. If you sign up to a new newsletter, you would like to have the first newsletter delivered to you immediately. Otherwise, you don't know what you're going to get. And the other thing is that if you unsubscribe, you might want to send another newsletter to them and say, oh, I'm so sorry that you don't want to be on our list anymore, so we took you away, but we really want to have feedback why you left us. Could you please yes, state that in a simple form? And you get feedback on what did you not provide them with business use or for any value. So you can actually start thinking about your content a little bit more. So that's something that's an outer responder. Uh, another thing is if you want to have a course of uh, how to use your product that they just downloaded, there might be like there are 10 different tips on how to use that product. I think that if you download something today, that is more or less frequent for you. And maybe one day you get a uh, tip on number one, and then you get a tip number two in three days' time, and then in five days' time you get the next one. And that makes you actually start using your product that you downloaded and then you get more uh, satisfaction from the clients that actually download this thing. Or you can sell a course and say, I want to tell you that I'm the best in CEO. I want to give you 10 tips, and I'm, you're going to pay me $10 for that sequence letters you're going to have. You're going to get one every single week, and I'm going to pack that with information for you. That's something you can do as well. So that's auto mailing. And think about that it's like, five, like seven or five times that you have to be in contact with your marketing brand because you, before you feel that that is someone who's active, you can rely on, to start reaching a rapport. So auto-mailing is giving you the sequence that might be the thing that actually makes them buy this thing from you or get your services. Yeah. So, so actually Yeah, if you are not getting, if you sign up for a newsletter and you don't have a frequency in your newsletter, I'm not going to get that reminder, the constant reminder that I might not want to have your service at this moment, but might want to have that in five months' time. And if you are frequent enough showing up with your brand in their main box that they actually said they want to benefit from, it could be that you gave them uh, a series of tips on how you buy these kind of services. So you can pinpoint and say, if you're going to buy a new, new website, think about responsive web, think about mobile web, think about this. And you have maybe a series of articles for that, and that's sent out frequently. That means that you're an expert in your industry. And when they're now going to buy a new, new, like a new website, they might just say, think about, oh, you, you might know what you're talking about. So I should ask you first. So absolutely. It's always good to get people that are good technology 
it's always good to get people that help you with the writing. Yeah. Because the quality of the writing really matters. You know, people react as people react. When you write, you have to be good at writing. If you're not good at writing, someone else should write for you. You might be the one outlining what should be on the newsletter, but you might not be the one who's actually writing it. And the same comes to web. It's not a different thing, but it's more or less that when we have a content management system and it's as open and ready for us to write, we write. But we had to think about the visitor. At the same time, we had to think about the subscriber. How, how does that feel if they read that one and it's like not proofread or it's badly written and you actually got their attention? That might be that they won't open the next time. And if they might open like for three, four times more, they might be ready to buy something from you. So you're going to miss out on an opportunity if you don't. If you have outer mailings, uh, it could be for an event like this. They can be, okay, we have a stating for JAB 2013, and just giving the date and time. The next mailing could be, okay, we have a big sponsor. Now we also know the venue of it. The next time could be, okay, we have a keynote speaker. And that's a teaser for every single time when people try selling stuff for you and you sign up and you still get invitations. That's poorly management of building your lists. So. If you look at, I'm going to present this information then in Meagur newsletter, just to show you some information about how to build your lists. This is the subscription and list building view in Meagur. I have all the subscribers over here, and I have all the lists over here. So in my example for presenting the auto mailing, we have created a product A customer list. And there is my subscribers, and I can see I right now have one subscriber on my list. If I want to add more, I can just check this box and say I want to have more subscribers on my list over there, and I can check in the boxes of the subscribers I want to have on the list and say assign to list, and they are on the list. And in my example, I produced three newsletters on tips on how to use product A. Product tips one, two, and three. And those emails or newsletters is created as all the other newsletters are in Meagur. But the difference here is that I'm actually doing a campaign of this, an automail campaign that's called the tip series of product A. And from the subscription date on that list, when they buy a new product, they get the first one the same day, immediately when they are assigned to that list. And then three days later, they get tips number two. And three days later after that, they get tips number three. And if you don't want to have that on a sign up, you can actually have a list already. It could be that you have a breakfast seminar and you just want to correspond with those who want to be on that list to follow up. Then you can put in a new list and say, on date, that means the next day after your event, perhaps, that that starts over then. So that's two different things. Everybody gets at the same time, or every single time a certain person goes in and buys a product A, they get this information in a sequence. Do you know the power now? Do you understand that it could be really important for you to use this kind of functions? Yeah. So, if you send this out now, do you have to be patient to get something because the first tip nothing might want to have something else in it. It could be that you want to sell them up a little bit and say if you have product A, you can also buy product B for a better price. Hi. If, um, if you do have that, they might not buy that the first time. But after a while, when you say that product B, together with product A, would be more benefit for them, they might start looking into visiting your site and starting to actually ask questions about this or actually yes, download and buy that one. Uh, do you have any tips on how to get more clicks and opens? Because that's what we're aiming for, right? I, at least from my audience or the audiences I work with, like if, uh, the title of the 
the title of the email is the most important thing. Yeah. And if uh, you try to be a little bit either silly or like kind of captivate their like, you know, top ten, I don't know, something that's like they want to know, like, like it's kind of triggering their curiosity, I find that's the most successful. So humor and uh, grabbing their attention with a great headline. Yeah, or shocking. Yeah, yeah right. or funny or shocking or Plus pleasure. Yeah. And that's um, really important because in the first couple of uh, words that you have, after a while, different uh, email programs start saying dot, dot, dot. So you can't wait until the end to say the most important thing. So it's like in CEO, you have to have the first most important words first. Otherwise, people are not going to see them. Uh, so it, that's a great tip. Headlines, that's really good. Uh, also, if you have uh, the name of the, the sender, is it your name or is it the company name? If you're known about some, like another name in your industry, use that one. And the open frequency is more if you are personal. You don't have to be private, but you can be personal. So if you are sending out something instead of info or unsubscribe or um, no reply at, there is like, it's not good enough. If you are talking to someone else from you to someone else, that's going to be the better one to have more opens. If you have call to actions in your email, as well as you have that on your web page, you're going to have more opens and more clicks. But if you receive a newsletter and you had no idea what's expected of you when you read it, you're not going to do anything about it. You're just going to be an open. But if you have a clear sign and say, okay, open, like click here to come to the landing page where you have more information. That is so much better than just saying that on your website somewhere you can find some more information about this if you are curious enough to find it. And uh, the book, the big black class from Seth Godin, he was telling about bananas, putting on a website for call to action. Just put one on it. Uh, is this the same on a newsletter, just one banana? Or do you want to put more? When you start sending newsletters, you have to have a particular strategy for every single newsletter you send out. Yeah. If that's to promote a, an event, or if that's to promote one of your product, or product, um, promote someone of your service, that would be the most important thing to talk about. Later on in the newsletter, you can say, I also do this and this and this, but that's not what's supposed to take more attraction. This has to make your main attraction, because that's what you're going to say go to my website, find out more what everybody else thinks about this because this is a great service or something. That's, that's better. Yeah. If you have too many choices, you get stunned and you're not going to do anything. You say, I'll come back later. And you don't want to have that. You want to have a free flow of workflow from first start, open, click, come to your website, do something. <laughs> if you don't get to sell anything, you're out of business, so this is really important. Um, if you look at uh, the, um, the, the top 30, or like 300 times 400 pixels in your email, like the top first, that's the most important part. So if you looked at my example, I had a big logo like this. That's actually it's not a good idea if you are not, if you want to have more place for having more information about what you're doing. So a tinier logo and more call to action on the start things. Yeah. So that's a better way of saying this is something um, maybe with a sign up and say, okay, this is the first information. But when you start actually want to sell something, you want to promote something, you should think about the first top area is the most important thing. And that's also because of the fold in your email. You have a preview, usually in your email program, and to, yeah, or your phone. You have to be short. It's more like if you look at newspapers and they have this uh, promotion before, you have to be headline thinkable. And keep your copy as short as possible. You don't want to read and uh, read too much in an e email. You want to see short, this is what I'm getting, read more on my web page. Or you can have movies, or you can have slideshows, so you can have something else that engage. 
So short sentences, short paragraphs, subtitles, bullets, and uh, clear call to actions is, is good things. And I would like you to actually think about, you can actually talk to people. So if you can reach out to people, say, if you meet people, say, I have a problem, people are not opening up my emails that much that I expected them to, and there's great value in them, so they're missing out. Do you know how I can be better? Ask your audience if you meet them. People love to give feedback. So please, you do that, because that's going to make a total difference for you. And if you make what, if you can find out what's engaged them, they're going to be more interested in opening it up. So if you have keywords or buzzwords or something that attracts them in your headline, that's going to actually make them in, open it up more. And if you give them what they want, they're going to deliver to you. That's so simple. But you have to figure that out, and that's, that's what actually makes it hard. But for those who succeed, it succeeds. But there's a lot of bad newsletters sending out, so it could be easy to get more. So that's one way of asking more about how to learn something about your subscriber. You can do polls, you can do surveys, you can do contests, everything to make sure that is there anything else. If you have a, pa a Facebook page, you can ask there and make a poll and say, I'm looking to my newsletters and I'm going to do a plan now for the fall. What do you would like to me to write to you about? What do you like to know more about that I can offer you? And ask them to give you ideas what you can write about. So then you can adjust your strategy and your input and your content strategy in that. And your timing and your frequency. If you ask them, when do you want to have my newsletters? It's one time a week, one time a month, one time every three months, when? Then you're going to go and get to know more, just not the statistics, if you ask more questions. And I think it's important to use it on all channels. So if you go to the Facebook page, there's a sign-up form. If you go to the blog, there's a sign-up form. If you come to the web page, there's a sign-up form. If you have social media, if someone starts following you on Twitter, send them an email or send them a response and say, thank you for following me. Did you know I also offer a newsletter? It's for free. I'm giving out the information I have, my knowledge. Let's share. <laughs> you do? Oh. But if you are interested in their service, because that was something that actually made you follow them to start with. So that could actually be someone that is interesting out there. And then when you look at the statistics, I think it's so really important to think about that like 70% are not opening emails with images. So they are not opened in statistics. That is only a way of um, calculate, perhaps, like see trends. Is this more red than others? But it's not actually the hard facts that you want to have. And look at the total send, look at the open, the clicks, see if there is something there that you did great than you didn't before, so you continue doing that if you change your strategy. If you're having a decrease, you might think about someone else is doing better than you, and people are opting out because you're not delivering anymore, because you have no passion on writing and what you're doing. That could be something, and then you might have to have a copywriter to help you to gain passion again, to reach out. And use free web services like Google Analytics, and tag all your tags for all your links, so you can see what happens when the visitor comes to your website from being a subscriber to being a visitor and where are they going? Are they going to the landing page? Are they filling in the form? What, what is happening? So you have your funnel. You were showing the, the template of the algorithm. Yeah. Um, and then the links on it. Mm -hmm. uh, are they convert with the, the campaign uh, to, to, to look up in Google Analytics? Yes. Automatically. Yeah. So it asks this little browser and in Google Analytics I can see uh, which of the visitors of that website came from a newsletter or so in Migu Newsletter, you have a plugin that's particularly for Migu Newsletter that actually hooks up with Google Analytics, so you can have all this information. Cool. Yeah. So that's a thing. So statistics is only whatever you say, 
on it and how you interpret it, whatever that is. But it could give you a, like a heads up or it can give you a, a trend or it can give you information of how, how can I say, please go in and download a free uh, white paper. Is that a good hyperlink in my newsletter? Or should I say free download of white papers or free white papers? What can I say? Yeah, <laughs> so free download. What is actually working for you? And try that out. And do that for part of your, your group of testing. You see, that's, that's going to make a difference. People are actually really picking up different things. And that could be different for each target market as well. So the most important thing when we talked about this strategy, we talk about sending out emails and doing this, someone has to actually do this, right? And that's someone in our industry is usually me, or you, or you, and we don't have a communication department. So it's really important to plan, otherwise it's going to be Friday and we're like, oh, Thursday, we should have sent that out, right? So don't do that, plan it, and say, okay, now it's May, so what am I going to do in August? What am I going to send out in September? What am I going to send out in October? What kind of things should I investigate and re make research on? to grab that information to, so I can repackage that one from my point of view and send out it. Or if you have a product, you know you're going to have different things on your feature list. Let's take your feature list, say, okay, I want to have this in a feature, I want to have this in a feature list, I want to have this in a feature list, and that's going to be launched during the next coming six months. You might want to send out and say, okay, I'm thinking about this feature, your target audience and say, whom is interesting in it? Should I do this or this? Ask them. But that could be on your, tar your plan as well. How should you know more about your subscriber? How often should you look at your statistics? And if you don't have landing pages, make them. Because that's going to be different in how you plan as well. So you integrate your your email marketing with how you use your Joomla site and how that is effectively doing all the other marketing communication and communication overall with your clients. So that should not be one thing about this is how you do the emails, but it should be integrated in your whole marketing campaign or your communication campaign. So any questions? Uh, I don't have a statistics how many use text emails. I just know that you have a bigger way of getting through still, and it's not like two percentages is higher. So you should pe you should be aware of actually having that. People are sometimes not in their own country and they don't want to download a lot of images because they pay for maybe not a flat subscription rate on their computer or their mobile or their. So they might just yes, then want to have different things for a period of time when they're working abroad or studying abroad or something. So it's a courtesy to do that. Okay. Any else? Yeah. Um, the biggest challenges I face now is trying to understand a balance of the relationship between social media and newsletters. Um, because I sometimes feel like I'm bombarding people and I don't really, sometimes I have a difficulty understanding the balance, you know? So maybe if you could address or have any thoughts on that. All the marking vehicles or communication channels, it's different. Like Twitter is a dialogue. It's quick, it's really there at the moment. It's hard to get back like an hour later and try to catch up in that conversation because that conversation is gone. It's like a phone call or it's like meeting over the coffee in the coffee break. It's there and then, and that's not email marketing. And then you have Facebook where you have the timeline, you, have, uh, you get into the people's day-to-day -day flow in their, um, in their uh, news feed. And uh, a lot of people don't know that, but it's maybe like 15% of all your information that you send out that actually is shown to your target audience. So even if you have 500 likes or fans on your page, they might be just like 15 that gets that information on their news feed because they haven't been interacting with you too much. They haven't liked your comment that much, so they are not prioritized. So you can see the people are that involved 
and engaging in your things, they are getting this more and more. And that means that you get like 80% of people you're not going to get on news feed. And one in 10 might come back to your Facebook page. You think that your timeline is so important, but you're just reaching one of 10. So this is actually something, if they opt in, they're going to get. So it's different. But I think that still you can have, like, you can Twitter out, now my newsletter is out, and if you haven't, if you are not on my list, here's a direct link to my web one, and then have a sign-up form, do you want to not miss the next, yeah, please sign up. So you can interact in how you communicate with it. Absolutely. Anything else about emails? No? Okay, so. Thank you so much for coming.